Good morning for those who's joining us. Um, please uh, allow us a little bit more time as we are still um, letting others join the meeting. Um, please remember to have your mic on mute at this time um, before we get started here. But we'll be starting here shortly for the Youth Mentoring um, Bidders Conference. How are we looking, Ms. D? You're probably good to go ahead and start. Okay. Well, once again, everyone, um, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining uh, the Children's Trust of Alachua County for the um, Youth Mentoring RP Bidders Conference today. This is the first of two we will have today. Um, before we get started, uh, I wanna um, introduce staff that will be participating today or also um, just a part of the um, CTAC team. Uh, I'll start with our fiscal department. They can introduce themselves. Diana Sanchez, Finance Director. Nicole Odom, finance manager. Ms. D. Demetrika Tyson, program specialist. Bonnie. Good morning, Bonnie Wagner, research um, planning and evaluation coordinator. Belita. Hello everyone, my name is Belita James and I am one of the contract managers here at the Trust. And Suzette, I believe you're on the call. Hi, this is Suzette Cook. I'm communications manager. All right. And I'm Dion Carruthers. I'm the other contract manager here at the Trust. Um, is Marsha on here, Ms. D? Okay. Well, Marsha Kiner is our executive director. She may be joining a little later. Um, so I'm going to um, get started and share my screen, and I will hope my team will let me know um, if they can see my screen. Everyone good? Yes, we are able to see. All right. So uh, once again, this is Youth Mentoring RFP uh, 2023-02 Bidders Conference. Uh, July 25th is today's date. Um, I'm going to go over a few things before we get started. This PowerPoint and this recording uh, will be available for everyone who um, attend or who does not attend as well. Um, first of all, I'm going to go over an overview of the agenda. Um, we're going to go over the solicitation of this RFP, uh, the minimum requirements to bid, um, the timeline, the term, and the scope of the RFP, uh, the evaluation criteria. Uh, the model contract, um, data collection and performance measures, application review and training, um, submission checklist, and then we have questions. Throughout the um, bidders conference, we will be doing some pausing to address any questions. Um, in the meantime, as we are going through each slide, um, if you have questions, please put them in the comment section um, and our team will review that and stop or try to get those questions uh, asked and answered um, in a timely manner. If you have a question, you want to raise your hand. If you know how to use that function, please hit that button as well. And my teammates will um, make sure we get that person um, questions or um, answer anything that is needed for this um, training today. Once again, this is being recorded. Uh, we ask that all microphones are muted during the time until uh, we may ask you to speak. Um, use your raise hand function, as I said. And like I said, all questions that will be asked today in the comment session or verbally will be um, documented and posted on our website um, in, a, in a couple of days after our, the trainings are open or finished, I'm sorry, for today and this evening at six o'clock. For those who are not familiar, uh, this is our trust um, website. This is how you access the trust website. Um, and this is what you will see as you're coming to um, learn about the trust. 
Um, but today we're going to be focusing on the bid and RFP section of our website. Uh, I'm going to go through there as well and show you how to access this RFP. I'm going to share a different one. So here's the live link to our website that I'm going to share. So everybody can see this, correct? All right. So I'm going to click on the bid page of RFPs. This will get you to our RFP. Um, you will see the bid RFP says open. So currently the only open RFP we have right now is the youth mentoring RFP. Um, if there was multiple RFPs open at this time, they will be shown there. So this is how you get, if you have already, I would say, or haven't, I would say all of these steps to get you more accustomed to how the process will go for you and making sure you have all forms and documents. Um, this bid RFP page is very important. Um, it has you give you access to the RFP, the overall overview, all access to all the required documents that you will be need to submit with your application for this RFP. And also will give you access to how do you submit your, RF, your application for this RFP and all required documents. Also, it will allow you as we go through this training, how to submit any questions um, during this time. Uh, we released this RFP last Thursday. We are currently in the cone of silence. The cone of silence um, means that um, the staff and our board cannot answer or at, um, any questions pertaining to this RFP. Um, so you're not um, eligible to ask staff or our board if you do um, ask any questions that uh, are pertaining to this RFP that can disqualify your application. Um, so we're in the cone of silence that will go um, until uh, August, and I will give you that date uh, later when that um, cone of silence ends. So today you can ask questions during this training. Um, also, you can submit emails, and I'll show you that link to ask questions pertaining to the RFP. So those who are participating, if you have questions or just not clear about some today, please um, ask questions with us today. So I'm gonna click on the Youth Mentoring Program RFP, which was gonna give us, get us to the next page here. All right. This is our programs page that introduce you to this um, Youth Mentoring RFP. It's gonna give you an overview of everything the RFP can consist of. I'm gonna to try to move this up here. All right. All right. So we're currently in the open bid for this RFP as we posted, uh, um, it is gonna be due on August 17th at 3 p.m. That's the deadline to submit your application for this RFP. Um, the pro, this is a page you wanna go through, I would say twice before submitting your application. Um, this would break down the scope of services, the, the staffing of the mentoring, as far as the overview, the, the bid for this um, RFP is, is $500,000. Um, and then what I spoke to you earlier, mentioned earlier, read about submitting questions. You can find that link here to submit any questions after the trainings for today um, that you would like to ask about um, the RFP. And we will address those questions and post them on our website. Another important thing to do is the email list here. If you have not already, and this is your first time working with the trust, or I would recommend everyone, please sign up your email to this email list. You will get all updates. You will also get notifications when we are posting um, those questions and uh, those answers. So you will get those in a timely manner um, once we post them. These will be addendums. So the addendas are important as well um, to keep track of because any addenda we attach to our website, you would need to download that, sign it and submit it with your application with the other documents uh, for any addendas that we do attach to this link. So make sure if you have not, please sign up for the updates email list. 
All right, so I'm gonna go through the timeline here is the 13th was the opening bid for the youth mentoring RP. Um, today we have the first of two bidders conference. Um, the second will be 6 p.m. tonight. Um, we'll be going through that and recording as well and posting those recordings in the PowerPoints. The last day to submit questions for this RSP, it will be August 4th at 3 p.m. And so you would do that on the email question link. Um, so if you have questions, you have to submit them at least by August 4th, 3 p.m. We will have our final responses written and posted on uh, August 8th by 3 p.m. And if, once you sign up for that email list, you will get that notification of those questions and those answers as well. The trust does off, offer um, office hours for technical support. And what we mean by technical support is you can set up an appointment through the email procurement email. We have three different dates that we will uh, assist you with. A staff member will be available on those three dates only, July 26th, August 8th, August 10th, if you need any technical support. And that means any documentation that you wanna make sure you have the right documents you're submitting, you cannot ask us about your application and questions. That's not what it's for. Um, if there is a document that's not working properly or you don't understand, um, you can ask about that document. Um, also, if there's a document with our um, budget form fiscal, you wanna talk to our fiscal department, you can also submit a request for an appointment uh, during the procurement email on one of those three dates. So if you have any uncertainty, I would say with those documents only, not about your um, answer to your application, um, that's what this is for the technical support. Um, so if you need to take advantage of that, please do so as well. Um, the application submission deadline, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, was, is August 17th by 3 p.m. Anything after 3 p.m. will can be considered uh, late and not will be uh, qualified for a review. Um, so you must submit before 3 p.m. And if you're gonna submit at three o'clock, I would suggest you might wanna do that earlier because when you're using email, they may not come to our email until after three o'clock. Um, so keep that in mind, try to do that at least an hour before, in my opinion, or the day before. Um, after applications are submitted and up for review, we will have a public open for bids meeting on August 17th at 4 p.m. The application review period for all eligible applications are gonna be between August 21st and August 25th through our review team. We have an external review team that reviews all our um, applications for this RFP. Um, you can register to uh, participate in viewing and listening to that um, discussion. Um, here's the link located here that you can sign up for that. Um, you will not be able to say anything or ask questions. You will only be able to just listen and, and, and see how the process and the scoring and the essay review as we go through that on that date on the 28th of August. Um, from that point on funding recommendations, uh, we will uh, be available September 1st um, in our board package meeting that we sent to the board and, and you'll be able to access that as well once you um, get an email from the trust stating that we sent the board package. So we will have our recommendations um, part of that um, board package. Um, the board meeting on September 11th is when our recommendations to the board will be presented. Um, upon that time, we will um, wait for the board approval um, this is still all the cone of silence period this entire time. Um, the cone of silence ends September 12th, as you see listed below here. Um, our goal is to have contract negotiations after the board meeting by September 18th. We can start setting those uh, contract negotiations up with those providers that are moving forward for funding and contracts will begin October 1st, 2023. Scroll down here, here are all the required documents you will need to submit and download for your um, application. You must download all these documents and submit through our procurement email. Um, do not uh, send the copy of the RFP itself. 
Um, we do not need the RFP sent back, but we need all documents form one, two, and three uh, sent back and all additional documentation like addendas that may come up that need to be submitted um, for your application. Um, we also have a, a, a RFP glossary document that you can review for yourself as well as the RFP itself if you have not already. But here are all the documents you would need and make sure you're downloading and submitting the Children's Trust documents only. Uh, our budget and budget narrative page, you must use our budget and budget and narrative page. Please do not submit your own budget and budget narrative page. I'm going to pause right there. Do we have any questions right now? My team, did, do we have any questions? There was one question in the chat. Um, someone asked, do we send an email confirming receipt of turned in applications? And I responded in the chat and said, yes. Okay. We do um, confirm that we received your application. All right, thank you. So I'm going to switch screens again. So I just went through this section of the RFP. All right, that's not the screen I wanted. There we go. Everybody see my screen again? All right. So just recap that when you go to the bid and, and RFP page, these are important areas you wanna pay attention to to make sure you're clicking on those to get the correct information. The most important thing is to, to ensure that you have uh, the, facil the facilitation of the skills. In our, as long as after someone talking, like for example, just as you say, you don't go there as Okay. All right, I'm going to go over the-, uh, the Yes. One second. Um, there's a question in the chat that I think um, should be addressed out loud. The question is, do you have to be located in Elijah County? You have to serve all children located and living in Elijah County. Um, so services need to take place in Elijah County. Um, you may be located in a different um, city, but the, the programs need to be in Elijah County. This is for Lockwood County youth only. Did I answer everyone that question for that person? Okay. So I'm going to move on to the minimum requirements to bid for this RFP. Uh, you must be currently qualified to conduct business in the state of Florida. Um, that means you must have an active certification from a SunBiz um, for the state of Florida. Uh, you must have experience working with youth in and out of school time. You must offer mentoring services to youth currently enrolled in elementary, middle school, or high school living in Alachua County. Uh, you must offer one-to-one -one and group mentoring sessions. You must comply with a level two background screening and fingerprinting requirements in accordance to, with Florida statutes. And you must have at least one year experience offering youth mentoring services with elements of character building activities. These are the minimum requirements um, in order to use to submit an application for this bid. I went through the timeline already, so we're going to just go past this slide. Another overview of the scope of services is the solicitation amount is $500,000 for this bid. Um, all approve um, or all requests for this application um, is up to seventy-five thousand per organization. Um, there will be no ap um, approval above seventy-five thousand. The timeline of the contract will be uh, October first, twenty twenty-three to September thirtieth, twenty twenty-four. The trust is is 
funding to provide support mentoring programs for one year with the possibility of the contract renewal based on the availability of funds approved by the CTAC board, as well as successful implementation of the program. Uh, we are strong focus on utilizing research form programs, best practices, and standards. Essential elements is the more positive experiences that people have with mute that. Okay. All right. Is there any questions about the scope of services for this um, bid? There is a question in the chat. Um, if we only offer one-to-one -one mentoring, not group mentoring, are we eligible to apply? This RFP, you must um, offer both components of the mentoring program. It's no and or, it's um, both components must be a part of your program. So I'm gonna, um, this next slide, I'm gonna have my uh, colleague, Bonnie, um, present this slide for us. Hey, good morning. So for this page, our board really emphasized the desire to fund mentoring programs that are either evidence-based or really drawing on best practices, research-informed standards, um, and committing to establishing a uh, practice-based evidence to determine the effectiveness of what we're of, of the programs that we're funding. So these um, links are, are in the RFP um, contractors um, on the organizational profile. There's an item six will will give you the opportunity to describe your model and how um, you will be implementing um, your program, the desired outcomes for participants and, and um, illustrate the, the program design and how it aligns with the standards. Um, one of uh, these are all great links that um, will show um, different analysis. And the first one's a, a clearinghouse that shows um, a listing of different evidence-based programs. There are some mentoring ones on there. There's the, the next one is a review of, of National Mentor Resource um, Center Research Review Board where they um, come and pull together all evaluations of mentoring program across the nation. Um, the third one is, is one of the my one of the favorites of mine that really highlights best practices in different areas of um, mentoring, providing standards in in recruitment training, um, how to operate the programming, and really is um, a, a good document to reference for um, what best practices and standards uh, that they found from years of research and and practice and mentoring. And um, so these are in the RFP on, on page five um, links that you can click on and reference and um, you'll have an opportunity to respond um, and, and provide information on your specific program in the, in the um, organizational application. Back to you, Dion. All right, before we leave this slide, is there any questions for Bonnie about evidence-based models, research informed practices from anyone? Yes, and just to clarify, um, we are required to use an evidence-based practice. Is that correct? Or is, or is it just best practice to use an evidence-based practice? You're not required to have an evidence-based program, but you are required to explain how your program is establishing evidence and how it um, is aligned with the standards and best practices. So there's an opportunity for you guys to describe your program model and design and, and add, um, and add um, documents to show whether your program has a lo logic model, what data are you currently collecting and, and to describe even if you're not an evidence-based program, how is your program establishing evidence or being able to think about your outcomes and document that effectiveness? Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate the clarity. Any more questions around evidence-based models? All right, thanks, Bonnie. 
So we're gonna go over program requirements now. Um, one-to-one -one, uh, mentoring component would need to be consistent and reliable to ensure trust. trusting uh, rapport is built between mentor and mentee uh, to build social skills, life skills, and positive self-impact. Uh, set schedules are to be in place to allow some flexibility so the mentors and mentees can identify dates and times that work well for their schedules in the one-to-one -one mentoring. Group sessions will serve as opportunity to engage youth and adult mentors in character building activities that allow mentors and mentees to get to know and socialize with one another. Um, combination of one-on-one -on -one mentoring and participation in group activity studies have shown and provide more positive outcomes than youth who are not involved in mentoring relationships or only involved in group activities. Another component of the program requirements it's stipends, emergency crisis intervention services, and transportation. Um, with stipends for um, your submission for this, this RFP with your application, um, you must describe how stipends will be used, provide to mentors. This must include how much and, how, and for what types of activities are, or events or other reasons that stipends will be provided within the justification section of the attachment budget form. The trust is allowing stipends for this RFP um, to be used for activities, not to pay staff. Um, so stipends are not to be used to pay for staff, but for example, if you're doing a group activity or group event, or if a one-on-one -on -one is taking a, a, a mentor, a mentee um, on a, 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 some kind of activity somewhere, those with stipends can be used for in your budget as you're describing it. For those who may have paid staff, um, you will not use the stipends to pay for staff. When you're submitting your budget, you must make sure you have that uh, described in your budget. Um, and when we go through that a little bit later um, for st paid staff, but stipends are to be used for any kind of activities you're holding, one-on-one -on -one activities or group activities um, with mentors and mentees only. Any questions about program requirements? Okay. Target population, all kids must be recruited and reside in Alachua County. Uh, contractors will provide mentoring and character building services to youth. Um, and as we described earlier in elementary, middle school and high school, um, so these kids must be Alachua County students and youth uh, living in Alachua County. Program evaluation for your submitted application will consist of four different areas. Program description um, is up to 30 points you can receive for this section of the evaluation criteria. Um, there are five questions listed. Describe an overview of your mentoring program focus. Uh, describe the curriculum or training that you intend to use. Also describe how your supervisors will be provide ongoing support in recruiting mentors. Describe your program policies, procedures, and address youth and mentors, incidents, and other unexpected circumstances during mentoring program hours. Describe how your program aligns with the trust goal three, all children and youth live in a safe community. Describe how your program established and utilizes evidence to access effectiveness and impact. Um, please indicate what your program currently has in place. Bonnie kind of went over this a little uh, earlier slide um, before we got to the evaluation. The second criteria is program implementation. This section can be scored up to 25 points with your application submission. Um, it's going to have five questions as well. Describe your program design and implementation. Describe how you will identify and recruit mentors. Describe the youth population and age range you intend to serve and how many youth in your program would you serve, would serve and how you will recruit your youth. Also describe your organization intends to communicate with parents or guardians that you have in your program. Uh, describe how CTAC funds will be used to expand or enhance your current program or create a new program. Describe your organization's 
collaboration, collaborative efforts and how those efforts uh, possibly impact your services and improve the lives of the children you serve. Um, the third part of this uh, evaluation will be agency stability and, uh, and capability. This section scores up to 20 points um, that you can receive. There's three questions in this uh, section. Uh, describe your organization mission and services. Describe your organization you know, capacity to carry out the proposed project plan. And describe how your organization will sustain your proposed program beyond the term of the contract. The final section of the evaluation criteria is the budget area. And this section is, you can score up to 25 points as well. Um, the detail the financial support from whom the amount you receive your proposed program, including in-kind services, your organization uh, leverages. Um, we will go over the tabs a little bit later in the budget. So that will relate back to that um, bullet point. I mean, those bold, um, Detail tab two for the budget. Uh, describe your organization's fundraising activities. Describe the com and complete and accurate budget and budget narrative forms. Attach all CTAC required fiscal documents forms as well. We will go over that a little bit later as well with our fiscal department explaining a little bit more. You can get up to a total of 100 points for this RFP. Um, Scores between 80 and 100 um, will be recommended for funding from um, the staff to the board. Um, scores from 70 to 79.9 are recommended for funding contingent upon available funds available from those that were scored um, between the 80 and 100 range. Any scores coming back 69.9 and below would not be recommended for any funding um, to the board. Any questions? All right. I'm going to pass this next slide over to my uh, colleague, Belita James. OK, can you hear me OK? Yes. OK, thank you, Dion. So if you are awarded um, funds within from this RFP, the, I'll just briefly go over the um, what a contract looks like from the trust. Uh, first of all, the contract is going to be inside of the um, RFP. You will be able to see what a sample of our contract looks like. The term is October 1st, 2023 through September 30th, 2024. Um, along with the contract below, you will see um, the contract attachments. These attachments will accompany the contract. First will be the scope of services, which you will um, complete within your application. Um, the second will be the final budget and budget narrative, which will guide how you will be able to reimburse um, if you are awarded um, funds through this RFP. Sec I'm sorry, not secondly, um, next is the certificate of insurance. So basically, um, the trust requires the our providers to um, have provide us with a certificate of insurance where we are the um, certificate holder. So on that um, insurance document, document, you wanna make sure that we are the certificate holder and that it appears at it, as it appears on the slide. So it must have exactly what you see under certificate of insurance requirements on, in that place, in that column on the insurance document. Um, next, we have deliverables. Deliverable is just the outline of items and due dates um, that those items are due. For example, um, the 15th of every month, your monthly invoice, your monthly reporting, um, if applicable, will be um, outlined in those due dates that the monthly report and the um, invoices are to be turned in. Um, next, it will also you will also have performance measures, which my colleague Bonnie will speak a little bit more about. Um, and these will just be the measures that um, will be. Well, you, well, they'll talk about how much. Uh, we'll look at how much you how wh who you serve and how many you serve. And then next, it'll just talk about the the efficacy and the effectiveness of the program. Um, next, we'll talk about the um, the next. It'll be the mandatory reporting of abuse. This is just a checklist that the trust uh, would like providers to follow when um, there is an incident that we feel as if needs to be reported. So 
familiarize yourself with that um, if you feel like there is something that you need to report. So that is pretty much it for the contract review. And as Belita pointed out, um, if you guys, when you're reviewing the RFP itself on page 42, that will be the start of the model contract for you to review everything Belita just touched on. Are there any questions? All right, we're gonna move along and um, Bonnie will be up next for the data collection and performance measures. Okay, so um, this isn't necessarily part of the application, but to give you guys a, a heads up and inform you about what what kind of um, efforts and, and effects we're looking, the trust is looking to see from um, investing in mentoring, uh, youth mentoring programs. So the trust uh, uses the results-based accountability um, model for, for looking at our performance. And it's a it's a partner, and, and because we we're hoping to fund um, several different mentoring programs to have an effort to, to change outcomes for youth in the county. And um, the measures are, are organized into three categories. So how much measures the quantity of our efforts, the number of youth who are receiving mentors, mentorship, the number of adults who are providing mentorship, the number of contacts, the number which would be the number of one-on-one -on -one match meetings, the number of group mentoring sessions, which we also discussed. We, we wanna see the, um, that it's both um, the one-on-one -on -one as well as the group to try to um, create a uh, combined effect from, from both styles of, of mentoring. For the how well, how well that, that group addresses the quality or the, the dosage of efforts, um, the engagement. Um, and there's a number of possibilities of how wells, but we focused in on looking about how frequently the mentors are receiving programmatic staff support. We know that that's really important to developing the relationship and receiving the support to provide quality mentorship. That parent involvement is also important. So we have that as a, as a component where the the parents or caregivers that um, that are attached with the youth are getting check-ins as well. Um, and the youth themselves that they're getting um, an average of two or more mentorship contacts per month. So that's also associated with the, the more frequent and the duration of the mentoring uh, relationship that are associated with those positive outcomes that we ultimately hope to see in our better off category, which looks at changes in um, behavior, knowledge, skills, attitude, circumstances for youth, which is ultimately what we're hoping to see through mentoring, that youth are reporting um, relational satisfaction and closeness with their mentor, which we know is a, is a protective factor, that they're making um, gains or doing well in their social emotional skills, that they are not becoming involved with uh, the juvenile justice system, and that they're doing well or making improvements in their school performance. Um, any questions on performance measures? And I think seeing um, data collection will help it make more sense of the, the details that go into um, learning about those performance measures. So we are transitioning into a, a new online data system and all our providers will be um, submitting their data through CMS, not only pro um, programmatic data, but also the fiscal components as well. So upon being awarded funding, um, program staff will register and receive um, training on how to use um, our CMS data system, where we will track program performance and invoices and all, all things related to your contract. In our next slide, um, I go over more specifics of the data collection, which is also in the RFP, as well as the performance measures in the, the blurb on CMS. So participant demographics, we're wanting to learn about who's being served, um, the types of um, children that are receiving and accessing these services. Um, on the next slide, um, briefly, um, just um, the provision of, of, of service and participation to get an idea of the level of engagement and, and uh, amount of services that are being provided through the one-on-one, -on -one, the group-based mentoring, the involvement of parents, and the programmatic oversight that, that staff are providing to the mentors and the families. So basically, you can sort of see how these feed into those 
performance measures I brought up on the on previous slide. And then the last um, slide goes into surveys and assessments, which would be how we would know about um, the quality of the, the mentor-mentee relationship that would be administered with the youth and the mentors. And then we would require a youth outcome survey to um, administer, to see, to determine the outcomes that, that the youth are, and the benefits that are, the youth are gaining from being involved in this service. So I will pause again to see if there are any questions on data collection or any anything that came up on performance measures. All right, I guess there's no questions. Thank you, Bonnie. So the next section of the um, our um, training, we're going to go over the application. Um, form one, this is a required document that needs to be submitted with your application. Um, please um, make sure you read through this and fill it out completely um, to your best knowledge. Um, this form consists of three, on this slide, three slides. Um, so it'll be three pages long in the application. Um, and the key part of this is to make sure you're signing your Form 1 document and also putting in the information needed um, for your um, agency address, name, um, and location, um, and ways to contact me with the email. So we would need that information, but please remember this is document one needed for your application to be submitted. Um, in the past, we've seen um, submitted document one and it was not signed. Um, so that's an incomplete uh, document. So make sure you're filling in all the areas of application form one. The next section is form two, another required document, but the fiscal department will be going over this document. I'm gonna stop sharing and they will share um, more about the budget and budget narrative. Thank you, Dion. Um, can everyone see the budget spreadsheet and workbook? Okay, very good. Um, good afternoon, good morning. My name is Nicole and I am a fiscal manager with the trust. I'm going to go over the workbook that you'll be entering the funding needs that you're asking for from the trust. Um, this first page is the summary form. You'll notice that there are um, gray areas. These areas will actually auto populate from the other tabs as you complete them in this workbook. Then once you've completed the tabs, you will go back in and put how much your ask is from the trust um, for each of the percentage of items. Um, the first tab, this is the tab that Dion spoke about. Oh, okay. Um, I got a request to enlarge the screen. And let me see if I can do that. Does that help anybody, everybody? Um, so now, I gotta figure out, let me go to my upper left corner. Nope, I may not be able to enlarge the screen because then I can't figure out how to show everything that needs to be done. Um, does anybody have any suggestions? Okay. Um, Nicole, just go ahead and reduce it. And then if anybody has questions, um, you can go back and, and enlarge that section of okay. the spreadsheet to show it to them. How about that? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's good feedback though. I'll figure out how to do that between now and the six o'clock. Um, <laughs> uh, this was what Dion mentioned about the tab two. 
what we are looking for is your other funding and revenues, including in kind, that you get as an organization to fund your program. Um, the description below is very helpful if you need to clarify um, items that you may or may not um, feel will be self-explanatory or someone else may not understand it either. So descriptions are strongly encouraged during your process. Um, our next tab, if applicable, your personnel. This is not contractors um, or your volunteers. This is only staff that you are asking for for funding um, from CTAG. There is another tab further along if you have um, contractors that you leverage to help with your services. I'm gonna stop right here. Are there any questions so far about the first three tabs? Okay, all right. When you go in and you're gonna populate this information here, your cost and how much you're requesting for CTAC, this next tab, which is the fringe benefits, will all of this blue shaded area will auto populate based on you completing the prior tab. So we tried very hard not to have to make you repopulate the same information and we were wanting it to feed in all of the areas for you. Um, again, this tab and the personnel tab are not for contractors um, or volunteers. The next tab is transportation. If applicable, um, you would complete this area and there's justification below um, that you can, it's free text. You can go ahead and just add however much text you need to. I don't believe that there's a limitation on um, text. The following tab, office supplies. Um, again, all of these have what we considered as a definition um, of items. You don't have to necessarily say, I'm gonna buy six pens, 12 pencils, things like that. We understand that if office supplies is one of the items that you're asking for for budget, that um, we recognize these types of items as office supplies. Um, if you're doing program supplies, there is a different area. Um, for program supplies. Sorry, I need to go drag this. Um, that would be our next tab. So again, if you wanna know what would our definition be of program supplies, it's in this area. Um, and here is contractual services. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have personnel and then you have contracts. This is where you would put those people that are working contractually for you. Um, certifications and trainings. This particular RFP does not pay for membership or membership dues, but if there is a specific training, um, one comes to mind is like CPR, um, those types of items could be identified as a um, potential fund reimbursement. Um, we have printing. Um, obviously, the printing is going to be um, for your specific program. We require that you um, send us a proof of what it looks like, and we ask that our logo um, be on the items that we pay for for your program. Communication, it is what the definition says. Um, these are the types of items that could potentially be for communication. Um, insurance, this is general liability insurance for your program. And equipment. This one, again, we do not 
recognize rental of equipment. Um, so if you have something that you have identified as an ask, go ahead and put it in. And then your um, contract manager, if they need more clarity, will discuss with you. And then other expenses. This is if we just didn't cover it in the other tabs. Again, if the tab does not pertain to your organization, you may skip the tab. Um, there is um, a lot of different options and a lot of programs have different um, budget mod models. Once you complete the tabs though, if we go back to the summary page, all of this gray area will be filled in for you um, from you identifying your um, funding needs from the other tabs. And please, again, use this workbook. Don't create your own workbook. Um, and then don't forget to upload it. And if there are questions, I recommend please do sign up for the office hours. Um, there's three different opportunities and we would um, be there to help you. Back to you, Dion, unless there's any other questions. Nicole, I had a question. Okay. Um, on the tabs that they um, may not may not be applicable to their program. Is it okay if they put um, not applicable there? Because that just helps with, when it comes down to contracting, they don't really like to see a lot of blank spaces. So um, sure. it's okay. Is that okay? Yes, okay. that would be great. They could put it in the description area um, because I mean, that that's a text field, you know, not asking for funding or not applicable or yeah, that's a great, um, observation and it would help our reviewers because they may not, they may think that they just forgot to fill it in. Thank you. Any other questions or? Okay, I will give it back to Dion. Thank you, Nicole. And for everyone attending, I want to point out, um, when, please go back and review the RFP uh, itself. At the end of page 13 and on page 14, we do have our funding restrictions identified um, as you're putting together your budget. Uh, so please go back and review that um, of the RFP before you submit your budget, um, download and submit it with your uh, other required documents uh, with the application. All right, form three, another requirement for your um, submission of application. Um, this section here will have um, the questions you need to just um, answer. Um, please fill out these questions as if you're just ne first time meeting us, you never met us, we need to know about your program. Um, if we are familiar with your program, answer the questions as if we're not familiar because we do have external reviewers um, and you don't never want to just answer as if we know what your program um, consists of. So be detailed in all your answers. Um, as you see, we have up to, I think there's 17 questions total that you will need to answer. I went over all the four areas of the priorities for the evaluation. Um, so these are the questions, once again, listed that I went over earlier on in the slide before, but make sure you're completely putting in detail answers um, as if we have no idea what your program consists of, but we want to know about it and make sure you're just, just giving us as much as you can uh, when answering all 17 questions. Download all three documents, make sure you submit them with your application. Finally, we're gonna go over the submission checklist. This is important. I would suggest go to your checklist and make sure you download all required documents. Form one, form two, form three, we just went over. In the addendums that we attached to our email listserv um, that you sign up for, for the questions and questions answered, please remember to download those and sign and send them as well with form one, two, and three. Um, those are the addendums. 
There's going to be an attachment one you're going to uh, need to submit, and I'm going to have fiscal address that um, area for you. Were you sharing a document, Nicole? Okay. Okay. So let me go in and share entire screen. This there. This one. That one. Okay. And we will. So among the items that are required for you to attach or submit include a 990. If you are unsure what a 990 looks like, here's one that's heavily redacted. It's simply an IRS um, statement that auditors prepare and submit to the IRS. And it contains um, your income, your expenses, a little bit about your, your company, and um, a little bit about your board and top perform top staff. So the other another item that's required is your audited financial statements. An example of that is the children's trust statement that is on our website. And it is simply talking about your company and it's an auditor's opinion on how you're doing as a company. And it shows your income, your balance sheet, your expenses, your cash flow, and an opinion as to whether or not you're following accepted, generally accepted gap rules and, um, and your own policies. Uh, if you're unable to submit an audited financial statement or a 990, then you can download for us the Department of Agriculture solicitations of contributions form that you most likely have to file if you're a nonprofit. And this also talks about your company, your board of directors. It also asks for um, what you do as an organization and revenues, expenses, balance sheets. So, and a certification. So if you don't do any of these things, then we would require that you provide income statement and balance sheet and minutes that you provide to your board, the most recent ones with the associated minutes. And that's it. How do I answer? Do you have any questions? Yeah, can I can I follow up with a question? Uh, Joelle, Executive Director of May for more. Um, thank you all for the information. So we need to have an audit or the 990. You listed four different things. Do we need to have all of those things? Or we can have a 990. Um, and that suffices, or we can have an audit and that suffices, or do we need to have all those things just mentioned? These are all options. So just in case you don't, or you don't have a recent 990, or you don't file a 990, then please provide your audit. If you don't have an audit or a 990, then the De Florida Department of Agriculture Solicitations of Contributions form, um, in its entirety, not like page one or two, in its entirety. And if you don't do that either, because you're so tiny, your organization is so tiny, then we would prefer, or we would like for you to um, provide your income statement and balance sheet and the associated minutes that you provided to your board. Awesome, thank it's you for the all, Or, 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 or. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank More you for the clarity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Okay. Any, any more Back questions? To you, Dion. We are unsharing. <laughs> So as I mentioned earlier um, about um, the Sunbiz, here's the link as well. If you're not familiar with it, um, it's also an attachment to you will need to submit that. Um, so if you have not got it, it has to be an active Sunbiz as well. So make sure uh, when you're submitting it, it's, it's stating that you're active. Um, send all these downloaded required documents to our procurement email listed here. The deadline, once again, August 17th, 3 p.m. Please, here are some tips. Do not wait till three o'clock to submit all your required documents. Um, tips I've done in the past is read my application, reviewed everything off the checklist, and then submitted it. Um, I always suggest when you submit something through our procurement, you get an email response saying we received it, but also review your email you sent us to make sure you included all your documents and give yourself enough time in the event that there's a document you missed, you can still submit it before the three o'clock deadline. Um, those are some tips. See what you sent, make sure you didn't forget anything and also review the email um, uh, questionnaire where we have addendas to make sure you have all addendas that we've added to the website for you to submit with your application. Once again, download all required documents. Make sure you're submitting only the trust documents and everything you, you have for your application submitted to the procurement email listed below. Are there any questions? At this time, that's where we'll be taking any questions. Hey, Dion. Yes, ma'am. I know we're um, we're open for for questions, um, but I do want to just restate what you just stated. Um, you all truly, if you cannot wait until three o'clock to submit your proposal, your application. Um, it would serve you. Um, it is in your best interest. Uh, anything that comes in after three o'clock um, is, is late, uh, which means that it, nine times out of 10, if it's late, it's not gonna be reviewed and you miss out on this opportunity. So um, there's a lot of really good information provided to you this, this morning, um, but take this one to heart submit as early as you can so that you can review and you can go back through that checklist and make sure that you have submitted every single document that you want to submit. Okay, so I just wanted to reiterate that one more time, Dion, maybe coming from a different voice. Um, we want you all to be successful. Uh, we are excited about this. Uh, this RFP and this money uh, and the work that you all are going to do. Um, and in order for you to be successful, you have to have everything submitted uh, according to the way that it's been laid out. So uh, I just wanted to reiterate that. So thank you. Thank you. All applications must be submitted through procurement. We do not take uh, walk-in paper copies. We recommend, please do not take a, a picture by your phone of the application and, and send that in. Please download those documents and um, submit those through the um, procurement. There's a hand raise, uh, Joanne. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dion. I just wanted to affirm what Marsha uh, just said. Um, um, I'm going to kill your last name, so I'll just say Marsha. But when we submitted an application recently for the other grants, um, I forgot the addendums, and I'm like an OCD. I <laughs> I cover my basis, and um, had it not been that I submitted it early, she did reach out to me, and I was able to get it in. But as you know, addendums are required with the application. We could have lost um, that opportunity because we didn't submit the form. So I just want to affirm that as a, a potential um, provider to the others on the phone, take advantage. Uh, CTAC is really great to help out when you make errors in a timely manner. <laughs> so I just wanted to affirm that. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Are there any other questions?
All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, there's no questions. We do, uh, staff here, appreciate everyone participating and attending our bidders conference for the Youth Mentoring uh, RFP today. Um, once again, this is recorded. We will have it um, posted. Um, any questions asked today as well, we will document and have those um, questions and answers documented on our website. Um, please sign up through our email um, update uh, email list so you're getting the updates. Um, and that way, you know you, you're getting all the information. And once again, this is a cone of silence. Please do not um, ask staff or board members any questions pertaining to your application, um, but take advantage of the uh, office um, hours that you can sign up for through the procurement as well to get technical support on any documentations of if there is any form not working accurate or you just don't understand that form, but we will not answer anything pertaining to your application uh, answers and questions. All right, if we don't have any more questions after this last statement, we wish you all well and good luck. And August 17th, 3 p.m. is the deadline, but think about August 16th, 3 p.m. to be on the safe side. All right, thank you all for joining us today at The Trust. Thank you, Dion. Thank you. Thank you.